Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Kev Kev, your favorite degenerate, and today I wanted to talk about something that I've noticed over the last couple of weeks of playing Halo Infinite. After many, many bad experiences of having teammates flake on me, I ended up just kind of asking myself, well, why is it that a lot of the time in multiplayer people just keep quitting or repeatedly just dropping out? and pretty much they just don't end up playing the whole game until the end. So today, I wanted to give you all a couple of ideas that I had on why I think a lot of people are quitting games of Halo Infinite and not actually sticking around. Why is there no player retention? And overall, what can 343 do to fix that? So why do people quit games of Halo multiplayer when they're actually in the middle of a game? Well, aside from your pizza delivery guy knocking at the door, the main reason why someone would quit a game that they're in the middle of is because they're not happy with how it's going. So they want to find another game of multiplayer that's going to give them what they want. And some of you may be thinking, well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, that's perfectly fine. The question I have is why is it happening so much? The reason why I think people keep quitting games of Infinite is because we have a really limited set of playlists. We don't always have as much freedom to choose and play what we specifically want, especially when you compare it to what we've had in the past. So of course that means I'm going to compare Halo Infinite to the MCC. While the MCC has had many years of development and it has been a really long road to get it to a good state, something that made it so flexible from its beginning though was being able to choose not only the game mode you wanted but also what type. So, if you want to play Big Team on the MCC, you can select if you want to play Normal Slayer, or Objective, or Team Snipers, Team Heavies. You have so much freedom inside of the one single choice of Big Team Battle. So it gives you the exact options of what you want and what you may not want to play. So because of that, Halo Infinite is comparatively really poor. What you have is a lot of sub-game modes that get wrapped in under Big Team Battle, and people are forced to search for all of those different game modes. So, understandably, if you get into a game of Stockpile and you don't realize it until the end, then you are going to probably quit from the beginning, because Stockpile is a terrible game mode. On that same note, if you haven't already checked out my video on how to tell what game, map, and game mode you're going into before you load in, then check this one out. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description as well. But anyway, another thing I wanted to talk about was the game's rules for when you are quitting repeatedly, and how that's very different to past Halo games. Halo games in the past used to be really strict with you if you were quitting all of the time, and the reason for it was very simple. There would be an empty spot left on your team, and that would mean the players who were doing the right thing would actually end up getting punished and having a worse game. Because of that, you would get temporarily banned for increasingly longer and longer times. With some of the new steps that 343 have put into place, it almost seems a bit stupid, because it's like the game is hurting itself in its own confusion. The players who quit their games on a regular basis repeatedly don't get temporary bans, or at least not easily. If you were the good player who stayed in the game, you wouldn't get anything to make things easier. You either get a empty spot depending on the game mode, or a bot to fill in the role. And let's be real here, the bots freaking suck. They're more of a hindrance to you. They'll get in your way more than they'll actually help you. They end up feeding people kills. So if you're playing a game of Slayer, then you're basically bound to lose. So in the end, 343 haven't even fixed the problem. They've just created extra steps where the players who still are in the game still get screwed over. So that's not right. Another thing that doesn't make a lot of sense is how the banning system works. 
I had to experiment with how the banning system worked because I actually wasn't banned in the entire past like two months of playing Infinite. So I tried pushing it to its limits. I swapped between Quick Play and Fiesta and would just repeatedly quit the game as soon as I died once. I did this five times in a row before I was eventually given a temporary ban. This ban lasted for about 12 minutes, which isn't too bad, but my problem with it is that there was no slap on the wrist to let you know it was coming. In the MCC, you get a one minute ban if you've done it a couple of times, and it progressively gets worse from there. It gives you a wake up call to say, hey buddy, what you're doing is not on, you gotta finish those games. That makes sense. It warns a player, it tells them when they can start playing again, and it also gives them a reason why. There is none of that in Halo Infinite. It is all very simply, user is banned. And that is not good. This is all a terrible system for temporarily banning someone. Personally, I think that there should be some kind of a warning to let players know that they're quitting repeatedly and that they have been given a temporary ban. Some kind of an explanation would go a long way. I know that the overall cause is a lack of content and not being able to choose specifically what you want, but I think that that will eventually be fixed over time. Right now, I think that having consequences to the people who want to keep quitting is necessary. But that's just my thoughts on it. Let me know what you all think in the comment section down below. Thank you all for watching the video until the very end. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe so we can hit 1k. It's all part of the great journey. I've been Kiv, and I'll see you all on the next one.